the most recent classification of periodontal and peri-implant diseases and condition is from 2017. This newest system is broken down into groups with subcategories, and this video will focus on plaque-induced periodontal diseases, namely periodontal health, gingivitis, and parentitis. Periodontal health really refers to clinical periodontal health, and this means absence of clinically detectable inflammation. How do we measure that? Bleeding and probing. The bleeding and probing score is based on all possible sites per tooth on all present teeth. Clinical periodontal health may be found in either on an anatomically intact periodontium, which is without clinical attachment loss or bone loss, or on a reduced periodontium. For this video, we are focusing on patients with history of parentitis. So when we talk about reduced periodontium in periodontal health or gingivitis, these patients have gone through and completed successful treatment of parentitis and now stable. Then a plaque-induced gingivitis is gingival inflammation, defined by bleeding and probing of 10% or more without active underlying destruction. And gingivitis can be further described as localized, more than 10%, but less than 30%, or generalized, which is more than 30%. It can be on intact periodontium or on a reduced periodontium. Patients that have gingivitis on a reduced periodontium have higher risk of recurrent parentitis. And next is a parentitis. In the older classification, parentitis was categorized as chronic or aggressive but now they're grouped in a single category of parentitis. Parentitis is then further classified by staging, extent, and grading system. Staging is based on the severity of disease and the complexity of the long-term case or patient management. So stage should be determined using the interdental or interproximal clinical attachment loss initially, and there are other factors you have to consider to move from either higher or lower staging. Grade is about rate of parentitis progression. The primary criteria should be direct evidence or observation on bone loss or clinical attachment loss over time if possible. If not, then use indirect evidence, which is the percentage of bone loss divided by age at the most affected, most severe tooth. You should assume grade B as a default unless there's evidence to support towards slower rate, which is grade A, or rapid rate, which is a grade C. Extent refers to generalized, localized, and molar incisor pattern. And generalized is 30% or more teeth involved. Localized is less than 30%. The molar incisor pattern describes what it used to be called aggressive parentitis. Aggressive parentitis is not a separate diagnosis anymore, and but it's combined in the same category of parentitis. So by designating as a molar incisor pattern, which is very specific, unique pattern of bone loss around certain teeth, this gives information to practitioner and patients about this very specific host biofilm interaction. So let's take a look at this flow diagram. Before you use this flow chart, you have to first rule out any non-periodontitis cause of attachment loss because this guideline will not work for those. First question you want to be asking is, is there gingival inflammation defined by bleeding and probing of 10% or more? If the answer is no, then there is minimal inflammation, then you have periodontal health. And based on the attachment loss and bone loss, you could further classify as periodontal health on an intact periodontium or on a reduced periodontium. And again, reduced periodontium refers to successfully treated stable patients. The reason probing depth for reduced periodontium is set at 4 millimeter or less, or because probing depth set at 3 millimeter or less will be very difficult to achieve after treatment. If there's a bleeding or probing of 10% or more, that, that means you have gingival inflammation, and then you could either be gingivitis or parentitis. At that point, presence of attachment loss and probing depth will help you guide the next step. If there's no attachment loss, then you have gingivitis on an intact periodontium. And you get to the other decision point where there are both inflammation and attachment. And the parameter to differentiate between gingivitis and parentitis at this point would be the probing depth. If the probing depth is three millimeter or less, then you have gingivitis on a reduced periodontium. Remember, these patients are at high risk of disease recurrence and of progressive attachment loss. Therefore, this is defined as bleeding at a shallow side of three millimeter or less rather than four millimeter or less. 
And if there's a probing depth of four millimeter or higher with bleeding, this is no longer a gingivitis case, this is a periodontitis case. Once you arrive at the diagnosis of periodontitis, then you have stage, grade, and extent to describe further. Staging is from one to four, and grading is from A to C, and extent includes generalized, localized, and molar incisor pattern. In this video, we went over plaque-induced periodontal diagnosis. These are guidelines and case description. Your patient case might not fit exactly. There might be pseudopocket, active smokers who have minimal bleeding and probing, you might have attachment loss who might be too difficult to detect, or there might be a mixture of periodontitis and non-periodontal cause of attachment loss. Remember to step back and take a look at the big picture, right? Along with the patient information and the clinical data you gather, you will have to use your clinical judgment to really make the most appropriate diagnosis. Thank you.